footage we've just seen of the massive rally for Chavez, which the estimate is 3 million people, was taken by Carl Eric from Denmark. And Brigade, organised from Australia, included mm. this time a range of international guests, uh, international activists, so from Denmark, from Mexico, from Greece, uh, and while we were there, we were joined by a couple of Germans and collaborated with uh, some people from the UK. I spoke to Christian from Germany, who has been to Venezuela many times. Christian writes for the website called America 21, and uh, he is very excited about the process in Venezuela. This time when I get here, um, I met these nice people from your Australian brigade who uh, has been so kind to invite me to some events. So um, I got a new impression, uh, especially in, on behalf of this uh, in Petara, a barrier uh, I did not know until now. Um, in the last years, I visited other barrios um, on the um, uh, western side of the city, south and west. Uh, for example, Katya and uh, 23 de Enero. Um, so this time it was a very different experience and I met um, an Consejo Comunal and a joint structure of Consejo Comunales uh, to, uh, to a comuna and I found them very much more organized than, for example, one and a, one and a half year ago. Um, but this was on the other side of the city. Um, my impression is that a very important thing in these uh, structures is that the people who organize there do it in a way um, to learn how to handle their possibilities and they seem all the time to celebrate in their activities their empowerment. So you, you can you can notice um, that's uh, a new time for them because uh, before the Bolivarian protests yeah. started, they did not have ever an expression, and public expression, these people. And on behalf of the um, real power of this Com communal communal structures. Um, I I have not enough information. You see, these structures start um, on the level of the barrios to decide their um, their problems and to solve their problems on this level. And another question would be how much influence will get these structures um, on a national or level or on a level of the um, uh, economy in a national-wide sense. So these are open questions uh, we have to study more. I asked him what he thought about the role of the grassroots organisations within the Bolivarian Revolution. Um, on the side of the Bolivarian movement, um, I, I was already quite familiar uh, with, uh, with the way they make politics and with the um, advances in politicization of the masses. Uh, so I'm not surprised that they are very active. Um, they they um, have the capital capability uh, to mobilize uh, huge masses and especially um, that uh, activists on not on the top level of the government but also on the lower level 
have much to tell. You know, these, these big rallies, um, even if Chavez himself uh, 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 speaks there, also the local activists uh, get their time to speak to the people and they really have to say something. Um, and this is, uh, this time I got also some impressions of the campaign of the opposition. And this, for me, this was a very close picture to European uh, campaigns. Uh, very styled, uh, very um, um, professional in the um, pictures. Uh, but not really a message you can understand under political suspicions. They promise all, like I know this from Europe, they promise all, but you did not get any, any real politic um, vision. Um, so this time also they had some uh, bigger rallies, but all in the day, in the, da the daily impression, you cannot find them. Um, it seemed, it seems that they also no, uh, did, do, do not have um, activists on the uh, on the level of the quarters. Um, so you don't find them in the streets. And on this big, biggest march they did on Sunday. Um, I noticed that only the candidate for the presidency um, was allowed to speak, nobody else. And of course, uh, this is uh, not only, um, this does not show only how they make politics. This shows also that they have a problem um, in their alliance uh, because they, are afraid if they let speak too much of them, the contradictions will break out even more. I asked him whether he'd noticed any transformation in the role that the military is playing in Venezuela society today. We have in the history this year 2002 um, where uh, Part of the military uh, at this time uh, uh, was engaged in a coup d'etat against Chavez, uh, uh, which was led by um, uh, Fede Camara. It's uh, the organization of the um, empresas, of the um, uh, companies, of the private companies. And of course, was also engaged the right wing medias, uh, which are still very uh, huge here. Um, it seems, I think, the private medias has still near to 80% of the capability. Um, but the, or this would be another, another point. The medias here, it's very interesting. But the military, I think um, Chavez did a very good job in transforming the military. You know, um, the break um, it was also a starting point of the Bolivarian process, uh, the Caracaso in 1979, where the military was forced to suppress the people and the military of course um, they recruit uh, mainly themselves the poor people so it was a very hard experience at this time and from this Caracaso where about 3,000 people were killed in the streets it was for Chavez and these organizations of the Bolivarian process, it was a kind of starting point. And beneath the, um, the 
economic questions to struggle against the uh, EBS, um, uh, against the uh, neoliberalism and its international organization. Um, there, there was a, um, a main point to transform the military. And now um, Chavez um, is, an, uh, is president since 14 years, and he took a lot of steps to transform this military. Uh, when I was here one and a half years ago, I met a rally on the area of the military academy here in Caracas, a huge area. And at this time, it was the first time that common people were allowed to go there. And a lot did it. Also, militias from the countryside came. And all the people told it's a symbol that in the first time they are allowed to go in this area and have contact to the military. And it was celebrated as a symbol that the military will not be forced against the people in the future from a political decision. I asked Christian if he thought that the Bolivarian process gave any lessons to the Europeans that are currently facing a deep economic crisis. The leads for the uprisings in Europe they, I think they exist, of course, but in Europe at the moment, uh, the elites are more aware of this than the people who start struggling at the moment, for example, in Greece, in Spain, in uh, Portugal. Most in the European region, uh, not very much in the center, uh, but there should be start also. Um, but up to now, the awareness on of the process in uh, Central America and in South America, and the process of the Bolivarian Revolution, the awareness in uh, Europe is not very high up to now. But of course, the elites in Europe uh, would be very happy to um, to contain this process in South America that there will not um, um, will not come ideas from there to Europe. If people are interested in finding out more about Venezuela and deepening their understanding of the process of struggle there, they really should inquire about the brigades organised by the Australia-Venezuela Solidarity Network.